Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. Uh, today I want to talk about phase and what exactly phase is and some of the things you can do with it and some of the problems um, not treating phase right uh, might cause in your um, sounds. So this very technical video and a little bit more in depth on, uh, on the, the, the issues you might have with phase. Um, so yeah, uh, before we start, actually, I want to talk a little bit about my channel. Um, as you've noticed, I actually uh, broke my upload streak, my kind of schedule of daily uploads, and I haven't uploaded anything in, in, in two days, which isn't really that long, but um, it kind of felt refreshing. So it's nice to be back. And I just wanted to take a little break uh, to kind of refresh myself, reset myself, and hopefully I can uh, from now on keep up the, the uploads and um, get back to my schedule uh, i might take a few more breaks in the near future it kind of depends on how i feel and how much other stuff i have going on um, with that being said i want to thank everybody for the support uh, the, the, the channel has still been doing great even though i took a little break and people are coming back to my videos and still watching them even if i don't upload daily so that's really nice to see um, but yeah without further ado let's actually get into um, some of the issues with face and actually what it means All right, so here I have four audio tracks. Each has its own sine wave on them. And um, to really understand phase, what we have to do is to have to look at these different waveforms here. Uh, so we can see um, minus the little attack thing we have here to, to remove all the clicks. We can see that we have four sine waves which each start kind of at a different position. Uh, you can see we have the first one starting at um, the, the zero line and then going down. Uh, we have one at the negative, um, well, the negative highest point, the, the most negative point, kind of, and then going back up to the, the other side, we have one at zero going up, and then we have one at the most positive point going down. Um, so these are different phase values of uh, this signal. This is zero phase. Um, here we have 90 degrees. Here we have 180 degrees, and then this last one is 270 degrees. And phase is measured in, in degrees, and the degrees basically say, okay, let's say this is the starting point of the wave, and we repeat from here up until here, then the, the, the actual value is saying how far am I in this, this little box here? Where, where is my starting point um, in, in, in regards to where the original starting point of that signal is? So let's say I'm, I'm, I'm generating a sine wave again with a starting point um, at, at this, this, this zero line and then going down. Um, we can see if we move a quarter or 90 degrees in to the wave, uh, we're right here. So that's how that's measured. Um, now there's some things you can do with phases. Um, one of the most commonly known one is that opposite phases uh, cancel each other out. So if we have a signal at zero degrees and a signal signal at 180 degrees, summed together, they will not give us any um, audio output. As you can see here, both meters are actually showing an output, but our master meter down below isn't. And the reason why this is happening is actually pretty simple. If we look at these two waveforms and kind of collapse these two, uh, you can see that here we are at zero for both of them and then this is going up while this is going down so if we sum let's say this value with this value you're gonna have uh, let's say this is negative four just saying a random value it's probably not negative four but let's say that this is negative four because this is the exact opposite wave uh, this has to be positive four and negative four plus positive four is obviously zero um, so did all these points kind of cancel out with each other um, so that's something you can do with, with phase and by setting your phases right you can uh, cancel out other waveforms and um, use that. Now where this is useful is, um, for example, let's say you have an effect um, on a track. Um, for this track I have a simple EQ here and then I have a copy of the track with its phase reversed. Now here I'm using the utility and uh, this reverses the left and the right channel. Um, so both of these, these channels, the one up here and the one down below, are actually going to be flipped upside down. Um, which means that we have um, 
uh, 180 degree copy of the original audio track here. And if we listen to these two combined, let me quickly loop that, then you can hear that uh, again, these two cancel out. You can see we have audio here and there and no audio in our master. Uh, but now let's say I introduce a little bit of a difference here. Uh, what will happen, for example, if I up, uh, up this, this high pass here. You can now hear that we do have audio output, although it's very, very little. Um, because there is a difference between this waveform and this flipped waveform, uh, that means that the summing isn't going to be 100% um, cancelling the things out. Um, so you can use this property of, of phase and kind of the, the, the flip waveform um, to maybe uh, make something sound a little bit filtered. If we put this all the way up here, there's going to be a very little difference. And you can hear even the slightest difference kind of gives you that, that, that weird feeling. So this is a way you can use phase or not really a phase, but the more the, the properties of a waveform and the, the, the flippingness of it um, to again cancel things out. Um, so that's one of the properties I wanted to discuss. Uh, now I want to get into mo some of the, the more common problems you might run into with phase and uh, mainly um, phase distortion, which is um, a property of, of filters and um, other processes that um, do something to the, the, the EQ, maybe like a multiband compressor it has crossover filters, um, which um, introduce this, this phase distortion in most cases. Um, so what it is, is basically, let's say we have this very small file here. If I zoom in and in and in, you can see we have this, just a, a very tiny click here, which is called an impulse file, um, which I've covered before. Now what you can do with an impulse file is kind of test um, the, 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 the phase distortion that a processor might introduce. Um, so as you can see, if I delete these two, we have an EQ here on it, and we also have a track to record it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to record it normally, um, so like this, and you can see that the, the, the file doesn't really change. Um, we have an EQ on there, but it's not really doing anything, so the file doesn't change and you don't get the, this, this phase distortion that we were talking about. But now if I introduce like a filter, let's say I have a high pass filter here at, at 677, just an arbitrary value that's kind of nicely in the middle um, of our spectrum here. If I now record this, you can see that there's a little tail here, um, which just slightly wobbles after it. And this is what phase distortion does, it introduces um, the frequencies around the cutoff, around the, the, this point here, are kind of elongated, uh, made a little bit longer and kind of ring out. Or in the case of a um, linear phase filter, they might uh, start a little bit earlier and therefore cancel out, but they're, they're still there. Uh, so these phase issues, these, these, these very small tails, as you can see, if I zoom out, you can't really see it. Um, but if I, I zoom really in, you can see that there's just this slight tail. Um, these things can add up. If you have a lot of processors that use filters and then you have some, some compression in there as well and uh, maybe the, the original wave is a lot longer, um, then you can have very long uh, tails here. And I can actually show you that with my standard um, bass patch. So if I go to my instrument rack, and I just grab my standard bass patch. This is the bass patch I, I most commonly start off with um, when starting a new track. I'm going to quickly create a MIDI clip and we'll make, uh, in the key of E, we'll make a um, quick stab here. So this is it. If I now, um, wait, let's make it a little bit shorter. Let's make it a, uh, a 16th note. If I now record this, we can see that it's actually going to be a lot longer than um, the original MIDI file here. You can see we have all this post stringing here, 
which is a result of the, the, the processing on my standard base patch. And this is just because I have three plugins here, which then get limited. So these three plugins, uh, mostly this one, introduces a lot of, of these phase issues in the low end, um, which then get summed um, together into this, this limiter, or they get pushed together into this limiter and really extend it. And you can see it, it's this, this whole second quarter or the second 16th note here is kind of just, just filled up with the, the rumblings of the, the first one. Um, so that's something you need to look out for with, with phase distortion, which is mainly the thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with phase. There's um, Phase has a lot more to do with like FMing and setting the phase right there it really can make or break a sound. Um, it has to do with like kick synthesis. If you're into kick synthesis, then the phase of your 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 attack is really important. Where uh, in the, in that that swoop in the sine wave, where do you start? Um, do you want that natural click you get when you uh, have no attack and you instantly kind of go from zero to a, a very high point, or do you want your your attack to be a little bit more subtle? Uh, you might start at a point closer to that zero line, which is silence. Um, so phase is very important in a lot of different. Um, very niche kind of sound design thingies, uh, I would say. Uh, but it's important that you understand this stuff. And um, I hope this tutorial was clear enough. If it isn't, um, leave a question down below. And if it was, leave a like. And um, yeah, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.